everyone, I'm Kiri and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be discussing binoculars and how to use them and give you a few handy tips along the way. So stick around just like these midges and mosquitoes are around my head and I will share with you step by step how to use binoculars. So you're either watching this episode because you've purchased your first pair of binoculars or you've been gifted with binoculars and you're just not sure how to use them or you're just curious. Bird watching is totally possible without binoculars just by using your hearing and just observing but species will sometimes come close to you without you even putting in much effort at all. But if you want a truly up close and personal experience that will completely revolutionise your world then I suggest getting some binoculars. Sorry, there's just midges everywhere and little mosquitoes and it's just driving me nuts. Moving on. When my husband and I travelled Australia for 10 years, I took some people on some guided bird watching tours and outings around Darwin in the Northern Territory. And some of them I noticed who were new to using binoculars, they just really struggled with locating the bird before it flew away or shifted to a different branch. Um, and so it, it really made sense to do a video that might help like this. So I'm currently on location at Mebane Forest, which is just out of Mwollomba in New South Wales. It's a little bit of a hidden gem really, there's a lot of people that have never heard of this place when I tell them about it, but quite often I come here to birdwatch, to relax, do some of the walks down near the creek and just to get away from it all, except mosquitoes want to come with you everywhere you go. And I forgot to bring spray. but um. First, let's have a look at some birds. Let's see what we can find. Quite often, there is spectacle monarch here. I've seen rifle birds, scarlet honey eaters. Um, goodness, what else? Russet-tailed thrush, more near the creek area, but that's been seen here. Marbled frogmouth at night time. Sooty owl will call. Some people have heard that. So it's it's got a real diverse range of amazing species here. So choosing the correct binoculars for you out of the plethora of options that are on the market can be quite overwhelming, I know. I also had the same problem. You can, you can get some binoculars that, oh, I've got rain dripping in my binoculars, that's really not good for them. You can get some binoculars that are $30 and they range right up to $2,000 or, I mean, you're paying for the glass really and the lightweight and the just, there's so many benefits of the more expensive ones, but if you're just getting into it for the first time, just a cheaper pair it will do you just fine. Some of the cheaper but more good quality brands that you can get on the market, uh, just some that I can think of is Bushnells, there's Nikon, uh, not Monarchs, Nikon Aculons I think they're called, there's Olympus, there's the Nikon Monarchs that I actually have there on the market, but these are 12 by 42 so not many people make these ones, it's just a bit more of a narrower field of view, makes it a little bit more difficult but once you get used to them, it's um, yeah, second to none really, in my opinion. Except for if you're going up into the higher range, which is ones like Zeiss, Swarovski, if I'm even pronouncing it right, Leica. All those kind of ones, they just have like um, anti-shake, crisp quality, um, pretty sure they're waterproof, lightweight. Many apologies because I'm constantly <laughs> swatting my face. There's just little midges flying in front of my eyes. Uh, so, so much on the market that you could possibly get. When I first started out, I got a $30 pair of binoculars at the post office and it actually frustrated me so much because it would half work. Like one, 
one side would work and the other wouldn't or it would fog up or, or at some points I was like looking through one eye just trying to see a bird and it just got frustrating so eventually I just I just was like what the heck I'll just go buy a really nice pair of binoculars that aren't too expensive but are still going to give me a really good quality and uh, a good view of what I'm trying to look at. bird watching in the rain honestly so there are a few different magnifications to choose from and just off the top of my head I'm sure there is many more there's like 8 times 42s 10 by 42s 12 by 42s which is the ones that I actually carry which aren't as popular I think only Nikon makes these ones because they've just got a real um, small field of view here when you're trying to spot something yeah, it's a bit harder to locate it using these ones because you're not seeing as much foliage. You just, yeah, it's quite focused, which I'll explain a little bit more later. Um, some lightweight, smaller binoculars are quite ideal for hiking. You can just put them in your backpack or in your pocket, or if you have children, they would probably like to just put them in their pocket as well. But what I'll do is I'll just explain those numbers that I just mentioned above in a little bit more detail and then you can understand what these magnifications actually mean. And as you can hear in the background, there's a beautiful whistler calling. Is it going to call for me? <clears throat> the reason why I personally chose these binoculars is because these were the model that a friend of mine had when he... When, oh, I think he still has them actually, but when I first got into bird watching, he had them and this is the first type of binoculars that I ever looked through so I thought, oh well they work for me and they, they fit my eyes and I can bring them in quite easily and so yeah, they really suited me, they weren't too heavy either, but yeah, most, like essentially they could just accommodate my really narrow eye area in here just because they can pivot like this. Plus I just, I wanted the actual bird to fill my whole view, so less of the branch, more of the bird when I was looking, which I'll explain a little bit more in the next section. Oh, and I forgot, another added bonus of these binoculars in particular, these Nikon Monarchs, was that they cost me about $800 at the time, which sounds like a lot, but when you compare it to like the $1,500, $2,000 pairs, which are amazing if you can afford them, but I just couldn't, so these still gave me amazing um, clarity, crispness, I could see everything. It almost looks 3D, like it just pops out at you and you're able to focus with this dial. Just, you can peer between the bushes and the branches and the leaves to try and see something that's hiding way over in the back. So, yeah. But like I said before, my first pair cost me $30 and they were frustrating, so it just made sense to upgrade. And you'll probably find the same if you start out with something that's really cheap. You will eventually want to upgrade. It'll just drive you nuts if you don't. So, yeah. The only problem for people that are new to bird watching or using binoculars is how to actually use them quickly. Uh, it's a bit of a skill and it takes a while to just lock onto the subject before it disappears. So let's talk about the different functions on the binoculars themselves, just so as you get a little bit of a, a handle or a grip on how they work. So these two pieces here are your eye cups. And if you don't wear glasses, you will be, it's, it's quite fine for you to just keep that open. You don't move them at all. They just, because they can twist in and out. So you leave them in the out position. If you have glasses on, or you have prescription glasses, you twist them in like this, and then you put them to your glasses. And so, yeah, that's that's the best way to do that. I've seen people struggle with that before, and they've got glasses on, they're like, it's not working, why can't I see the bird? And yeah, so that is why. Um, right here, there is a main focus ring here. This is, you'll find that just between these two ocular pieces and this is your main focus ring as I said 
when you are looking at a bird and you put it straight up to your eyes and you're adjusting to try and bring it into focus when you're looking through both and um, yeah that will help you out greatly the the third thing I think I'm up to three that I want to say is that these pivot which is very handy like I said before I have very narrow in here some people have a wider head like my husband he's just got a little bit of a, a wider head than myself and so he can pivot this out as you can see it pivots in and out so for me I need it all the way in so as I don't get this double vision sort of overlap going on but for him and for others you'll have to shift them outwards to adjust so just to demonstrate how to set your binoculars up for the first time or if like you really don't want to do this but if they bump or they fall or this gets out of whack you know it's just not working for you or lining up <clears throat> you'll want to adjust this main focus dial and this diopter specialized dial which you'll find on the right um, side here so to do that firstly what you do is you cover the right side of your binoculars like this or you might have a lens cap you can do use that as well so you cover the right hand side and you because you can't see through that side you're just using your left eye and you use the main focus wheel to adjust with your left eye so you would pick an object that could be like a, a seat or a tree or wherever you are something that's stationary and you adjust until that's absolutely crisp with your left eye and then you leave that then you cover the other side with your lens cap or your hand and hold that there and this time you're going to be using your right eye to focus but you don't want to use the main focus wheel you want to use this diopter this specialized one here so you look through with your right eye this time and you adjust till that is clear once it's clear you can then just you just leave that that should be just set and then both of the main focus wheel and this diopter should um, be lining up now with your binoculars and you should be able to just spot onto something so pick an object or a subject if you're at a park it could be a park bench or a tree or maybe there is a bird in front of you even better like a duck or something that's used to people and then just focus on it use your main focus wheel and if it's still not quite right you do those functions again Another handy tip I really should say is for a while there we lived up in the top end of Australia up in Darwin in the Northern Territory and so I went bird watching a lot and quite often actually in the beginning I had to learn the hard way and um, I'd be in my car even at 8 o'clock in the morning it's quite humid at certain times of the year and I'm driving along and I've got the aircon blasting because I'm just really hot and windows are all up I jump out of the car get to my destination I see a bird I want to look at and I grab my binoculars grab my camera and because I've just been in an aircon car and I'm coming straight out into a humid temperature environment instantly these two glass fronts here and where you look through just fog up they just go fog and you can't see anything and even if you wiped it it just fogs up again because inside here as well it has um, yeah, been affected by that change in temperature of humidity cold to humidity it's also not good for the binoculars or your camera gear because you can get like mold and mildew growing even down inside the barrels like um, and you can get fungus and all sorts of things growing which can really ruin your equipment so you've got to be pretty careful of that so after I learned the hard way doing that I from then on even though it was really hot 
I would just drive with the windows down so that the air temperature outside was the same inside. As soon as I got out, I could just quickly look and spot whatever I want, whatever I wanted to spot without getting frustrated or missing out on a really amazing species that I might not ever see again. Um, so yeah, you really want to be prepared for that, for those situations. So as you can see, once you get really skilled at this, it just it becomes effortless. You just go out and you'll see a bird and you'll just be like and instantly adjusting this main focus dial and just following it, tracking it. It just gets easier and easier and easier. Um, one thing that I probably should tell you that I've seen people that are a little bit new to bird watching or even just using binoculars in general they'll see they'll see a bird on a branch and they'll just go you'll point it out to them and they'll be like oh my goodness <laughs> my shoe is stuck in the mud just then I couldn't move it uh, yeah so they will be looking you'll be looking at a bird rather and you'll be like, look, 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 can you see that? Can you see that? And you really want them to see this bird because it's pretty amazing. And they will grab your binoculars and then just be going like this. Where? 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 I can't see it. Where is it? And getting frustrated and frustrated. So the easiest thing to do um, if you're learning, and I, I did this too in the beginning, I, it took me a while to get the hang of it, is you look with your eye at your subject and you don't take your eye off it you just stare at it and then bring these binoculars straight up to where you're looking like don't don't look at it and then look down and then go like this because you'll still be doing this you just look at it bring the binoculars do not move your eyes off it bring it there and it'll be it should be right in front of you or in the general vicinity like a centimeter to the left or the right or whatever of where you're looking but just don't wave them around because yeah you'll just frustrate yourself and then you'll lose sight of the bird and it'll fly to China before you see it so yeah some handy tips of lessons I had to learn the hard way I get very distracted when the birds are calling it's just so beautiful here. I'm glad the rain has stopped though, so that really helps. But the midges and the mosquitoes, they have not stopped. They are still attacking me. So yeah, I apologize for all the swatting that I'm doing, but yeah, I don't really want a blood transfusion. Well, oh my goodness. I just got the most disgusting whiff of something dead. That was a really bad dead smell. That was quite pungent. Yeah, anyway, um, that is all I have to say about that on the binoculars topic. Um, it is so very likely that I've forgotten something or I haven't explained something properly enough. So if you have any other questions or want to know anything else, then just pop your comment in the comment section below and I'll most definitely answer it and um, try and answer it to the best of my ability. So I am, obviously I'm just not a exhaustive supply of knowledge on this topic but I just know what works for me and what works for me out in the field out in the uh, outdoors and when I've taught other people so yeah I hope you learned something today and if you would like to watch some more of our adventures in the future just click the subscribe button below and I'll see you next time this happens you're on location trying to video for your YouTube channel and the heavens open and this is what you get <laughs> at the same time even though it's not ideal it makes me feel quite invigorated I'm a bit worried about my camera gear though <laughs> I think it might get wrecked I'm going to go back to the car. Something tells me I'm going to find a lot of these on myself when I get home. Because that's the one I did see. I don't know. I must be a... I think that went down my shirt.
you can just see this root system just going everywhere, just crisscrossing, leading to these two giant monoliths. Look at that. Wow. Quite often you see large build scrub wren here as well. And another massive, impressive tree. Wow. And then this, completely different color. Anyone know what that is? Is that just a young fig tree? Beautiful. Here we are, we've arrived. Cute little creek here. Gorgeous little spot. I've been here a number of times with some friends. And if you keep walking along to the right, look at that. It just opens up. So I'll show you. Oh, isn't this just gorgeous? This water, oh, it's not even freezing. It's just cold, but. I feel like a little kid when I go um, looking down creek beds like this. Oh, look at this. It's like a little grotto. I can see myself just suspended here somewhere. Maybe not because there's not really any places to put it, but like a hammock or something. This is beautiful. I can hear a plane above me. Such a happy place. Some of you have probably noticed that I am wearing thongs while I go bird watching. I pretty much do that everywhere, everywhere I go, except, you know, the kind of terrain where I need a little bit more support and stability in my ankle area. And you can probably see, I really need to touch up my nail polish. But anyway, minor first world problems. So, yeah, I'm just a wear thongs kind of girl. So this is a lovely place to camp. I've personally never camped here, but I see a lot of people do. It's probably because I live so close to here, but there's just so much going on right now. Maybe it's because there is a lack of people. There's just like little yellow robins everywhere. Black-faced monarchs seem to be just calling heaps. There's white-headed pigeons, yellow-tailed black cockatoos, King parrots just flew over. Got little thornbills there. There's a shrike thrush up on the road. Well, that concludes my extra bonus little adventure at Mebbin Forest. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you have been here or you're planning to come here, let me know, maybe a couple of us, a bunch of birders could meet up. Or if you have been here, tell me in the comments below. Tell me what your experience was at this place. Some rainbow lorikeets. Until next time, see ya.